don't know I must have my production in the case again. So up a rang. Good morning, Trinidad and Tobago, and welcome to PSA TV. I'm Avalon Williams. We have in studio here with us Leon Caldero. Good morning. How Good are you? Morning. I'm doing I should have told you that in Spanish. ¿Cómo estás? Bien, gracias. <laughs> Muy bien, gracias. Very nice. Leon, how are you? Welcome to PSA TV. Thank you for having me. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, when I got the call from you, you're coming to Trinidad, you want to come on PSA, I'm like, you are welcome. Right. Well, as I said, you know, Chris Rojas was responsible for um, <laughs> introducing me to you, putting me on to you. Right. And said, you right. Know, yeah. That was really nice. If mm -hmm. you could just give us a little background history. I mean, I know the music. You know, for persons who may not know who's Leon, you could just take us a little down memory lane. Well, I, I think a very good way for me to introduce myself is to start by saying, I am Leon Caldero from Cantaro with my cuatro. I come <laughs> to sing Asuka Chutney Parang for all year. That's a very good way for people who don't know who Leon Caldero nice. is. Um, no, but uh, I have been in the music industry for all my life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I started off singing Parang, mm -hmm. traditional Parang. Yeah and then branched off into soca because what happened, I found that Parang was just seasonal. Mm -hmm. Christmas and that's it. I wanted to be on stage 24 <laughs> seven, you know? So that's what nice. happens after Christmas? Yeah. I decided, yeah. you know what, okay, soca is my, is my, it's in my DNA, mm -hmm. it's in my blood, mm -hmm. it's me. Why not just do soca where I can afford, you know, get to travel and see different places and mm -hmm. at the same time, it's, it's a profession for me. Yeah. This is what I do. Um, so then I started singing soca at a young age, I would say probably maybe around 18 or so is when I branched off from Parang into soca. Mm -hmm. um, worked with several different bands in Trinidad, started with Trade Winds Brass and then Fools Express. Mm -hmm. and then I, um, Go ahead. Know, Go ahead. Then I moved on to uh, Sound Revolution, um, left Sound Rev and Migrated, mm -hmm. uh, where I was approached by Byron Lee and the Dragonist to be uh, one of the lead vocalists for his band. Right. So I joined Byron Lee, and I did eight years with Byron Lee, mm -hmm. but still looking for more. Still, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. I there's learned, never, you know. Right. I learned a lot with Byron Lee. I learned. I mean, this guy to me was like a, a university of music, right. Caribbean music. Right. And um, in terms of the, the, the do's and don'ts and, and all that stuff. Um, happened to travel extensively mm -hmm. with him. Mm -hmm. you know, I remember us doing something like 50 something cities and countries a year, spreading soca music because that's all I did, soca. Mm -hmm. um, even though he's a, a band that was based in Jamaica, he was one of the bands in Jamaica known for promoting and performing soca music. Um, after learning a lot from him, I decided, you know what, I want more. The knowledge that I got from him, why don't I just use that knowledge and do my own thing? Yeah. So I put together my own band, um, which is still together, Code 868. Okay. And, you know, doing a lot of carnivals and festivals. You're doing that abroad? Yes. Okay. In North America, South mm -hmm. America, Central America, wherever a promoter, you know, calls to hire us, mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. represent. That's really nice. I mean, how, um, how was it for you? I mean, doing your parang over there and then in Trinidad, 
You know, it, when, when, when you're Trinidadian, you're Trinidadian. Yeah. It don't matter what part of the world or globe you decide to move to or live, it's, it's a part of you. Mm -hmm. And um, I would be out there, but I'm still writing songs right. and sending it home. Mm -hmm. and the songs would play and people would love the song uh, because it, it's, it's a natural thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. However, this year, what I decided to do was something different. I found myself getting into a, a, like a box where I'm sounding the same way, writing the same style, mm -hmm. and I want to do something different. Mm -hmm. So I decided to see what it's like for someone else to write for me. Okay. As well, because I'll be honest with you, when you're not in Trinidad, you lose that, 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 that whatever is going on. The pulse, <laughs> the vibe, the, the lingo, the whatever it might be, right? Yeah. The, the slangs yeah. or whatever. Because I remember coming home two years ago, mm -hmm. and someone said, Caldero, oh, uh, we'll be pumping this weekend. Like, pumping? What are you talking about? You know what I mean? Like, first time I heard the term pumping, or we jumping out tonight, or <laughs> <laughs> so, jump out. I mean, we could go to the door. I mean, we don't want to jump out of anywhere, but not knowing yeah, you know, what, what yeah. everyone is on to. When yeah. Nesha had sang um, normal, normal, mm -hmm. or normal, you know, the way they, they say, but because in the States, people don't, they wouldn't say those things. Right. So I will not write with those type of saying or, you know, whatever. So coming home is so important mm -hmm. because you can feel the people, you can, you can feel whatever it is you're writing or singing about. Mm -hmm. um, hence the reason why, as I said, this year I decided to do a soca baron called Scrap Iron, which is pretty much, you know, I was lying in the bed and I heard buying Scrap Iron <laughs> or Battery Iron. So I said, no, something, when Christmas time <laughs> comes around in the countryside, is when I'm... Are, uh, are you finished writing that song? Yeah, it's, it's released, can, actually. Can, can I hear a piece of it? <laughs> <laughs> I woke up Christmas morning, relaxing in my bed. In partner Digo Martin, megaphone in my head. First I thought I was dreaming, a nightmare that was dread. I heard a voice repeating, and this is what it said. Scrap iron, old battery buying. <laughs> Scrap iron, whole battery buying. The people living next door pull back their curtain, bring out a rusty old saw to get a bag in. Scrap iron, whole battery buying. Yeah, I've heard him. I've heard him around. I mean, he's all over. Yes, he's all yeah. over. And because I think that 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 call, mm -hmm. um, that megaphone going around, you know. People, when I released the song, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. people were laughing, they were cracking, like, oh my gosh, Colero, yes, <laughs> you really, really hit it. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, you touched the people. The, I mean, the reviews on the song is phenomenal. Right. Do I'm people gonna, request really, for you to come and perform for them and stuff? Yes. Yeah. So you still... It depends, because my repertoire, I mean, I've been recording Soka Paran right. since 1978. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I have a huge repertoire, and people have their favorites that they would like to hear, and, you know, so... Sometimes I may have a repertoire in mind, but because someone wants to hear something that I've done before, mm -hmm. then I would have to switch up my repertoire. How long did you um, release Run? Run was released about, Run is about, I'd say maybe about 10 years old. 10 years? Yeah. Okay. And when you look back from 10 years to now, are you seeing any sort of things happening within Run music? Um, Again, the, the, the music has changed as right. everything revol um, evolves mm -hmm. and, you know, things are changing. Like I was saying, um, let's say for instance, my experience growing up during Christmas time mm -hmm. is different from probably your experience and depends to where you are part of the country you're from. Yeah. Um, I don't think that a young person today would relate to their Christmas experience like I would relate my Christmas experience. Mm -hmm. So I have to be able to change with the times. If I'm singing about baking, a, a, a boiling a ham leg in a pitcher tin yeah. and baking a bread in a mud oven and um, you know buying plastic curtains to, to, to hang and, and plastic tablecloth they, they, they cannot relate to that today they yeah. probably might know about getting an iPhone for Christmas <laughs> instead and, and you know taking selfies on Christmas Day while opening presents mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. that's what they can relate to as their Christmas experiences mm -hmm. as opposed to my Christmas experiences that the, the, the middle age or older folks will be able to relate to. So we have to change with the time if we really want to stay current and stay yeah. trending. I know a lot of artists that um, come into Christmas time, you don't really hear Paran music, you hear more soca. Do you so, feel the same way? Well, 
It depends. It's like they don't give Christmas enough airplay, you know, for artists to release their music. Right, well, it depends. Mm -hmm. There are different radio stations that has different formats. Yeah. So if you want to hear Parang, Soka Parang, you would really want to tune into Radio 100, mm -hmm. who celebrates 100 days of Christmas. Mm -hmm. And then they started doing Christmas in July. So trying to give it a little longer lifespan, yeah. more, yeah. more time. Um, 105 play Parang, but you're yeah. not going to go on 96.1 and play yeah. Parang, or, you know, <laughs> Slam. But at some, at some point in time, they will. You have the sister station for 96.1, which is 107.7 mm -hmm. um, or something like that. They play Christmas music. So when you say urban, you know, programming, you know, they have a different format. Then Slam and all then, of them, yeah. yeah. You find that so you feel any Christmas spirit coming on? Well, the thing about it is that I live in eat, feed, and sleep Christmas and carnival, mm -hmm. both, because, you know, living in Orlando, to be honest with you, mm -hmm. when I'm having a terrible day, I will just blast some parang music. It could be <laughs> May, it could be March, it could be July, and mm -hmm. I just get into a really good mood, because mm -hmm. Christmas mm -hmm. has always made me feel good, a happy time, a joyful time, you mm -hmm. know, and so, uh, coming home, another thing is living abroad, they're not in the Christmas mood yet. Mm -hmm. We we were at the end of October. Yep. They still have Thanksgiving to come, and the end of November. November. Halloween is going to be taking place around now, so they mm -hmm. they, they take a Halloween first, then Thanksgiving, and then Christmas. Mm -hmm. So we really only get into that Christmas mood. I would say we get about five weeks of it. Not even five weeks, but three weeks in December and one week in November. Yeah. Coming home, however, is different. When you reach home and you hear Parang music starting to play from the end of <laughs> September, you start getting into that mood already yes. of Christmas. Cleaning and all of that. But yes. I'm excited for Christmas this year. I don't know. Something about it is just having me so excited. Probably because of this crap iron song. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe because of Ron. Let me hear something from Ron from you. Oh, Ron. Me gusta más Ron. Dame más Ron. Me gusta más Ron. Dame más Ron. Vende señorita. From Venezuela, I invited her to this Paransuka. You know it's Christmas time and we're drinking home with wine. She don't want none of that. All she asking for is what? Me gusta mas run. Dame mas run. Me gusta mas run. Dame mas run. You keep your money cool. Ay, ay, ay. Iguana and tattoo. Talking about wild meat and you know yeah, Christmas time. Yeah. And me gusta mas rum. Is she saying that I want more rum? I love. I would like to have more rum. Well, I don't she drink alcohol. I don't eat wild meat. You, you, know, you don't, you don't <laughs> no. drink rum and you don't eat wild meat. No, 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 I don't. Oh, oh my God. No. So what? What do you do around turkey, Christmas time? Turkey. Turkey. Yeah. That sounds like an American Thanksgiving meal. Turkey. But we do it all. We do sauce in the morning. Mm -hmm. Traditionally, how I was brought up at home, my mom would make sauce. So we'd have sauce with bread and watercress. Okay, first time I'm hearing Christmas. of that. Seriously? Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah, and with, with bread. So we would okay. dip the bread in the sauce and, you know, okay. that, then we'd have ham for those who eat ham. I don't mm -hmm. eat mm -hmm. pork. And um, with chow chow and whatnot. And that's a typical Christmas morning breakfast. So you do that every year for Christmas? That's your traditional? Even though I don't live here 24-7, when I'm in Orlando, mm -hmm. that's Christmas breakfast. Yes. Interesting. Man. <laughs> and Interesting. we get everything. I mean, we get the, the crystals, we get the stuff to make the sauce, and right. you know, and I make a mean sauce. You know, I'm a, I'm a food, I'm a lover of food, so I learn to cook myself. And I well, cook you'll bake the turkey and bring it here for us. I'll bake it. No, we don't <laughs> make turkey anymore. I'll tell you one thing you want to try try fried turkey, deep fried turkey mm. in peanut oil. Okay. You will never have a big turkey again. Okay. It is the most delicious, succulent. It don't get dried out, mm -hmm. so it, it 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 keeps the flavor. You get this um, like an like an injection, an mm -hmm. injection mm -hmm. type thing, where you inject the seasoning. You marinate it under the skin, right? Um, using um, what they call it, Cajun oil with butter and stuff. And okay. When you drop that in that oil, you, oh my! I'll ask my you, mom about you, it. I'm talking to you about it. Google it. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's, it's dangerous to do. Yeah. Because the oil, the peanut oil, gets really, really hot, and you know you have to be careful when you're doing it. But it's it's 
is great. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you so much, Leon, for coming here. I know you're probably not going to leave Trinidad very soon. No, I'm not. I'm here until after Carnival. Okay. Well, yes. you'll be back in the PSA. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Thanks so much, Leon. You want anything, your last comment before we leave? Um, just to let um, all listeners uh, to follow me on all social media platforms, mm -hmm. Instagram, Leon Caldero, that is L-E-O-N-C-O-L-D-E-R-O. -E follow me on Facebook. Look me up on Facebook. Um, if you want to contact me, you can always contact me at 303-LEON. That is 303-L-E-O-N. And, you know, I just want to say thanks for having me. Yes. Thanks to all my fans. Thanks for your support. Um, be safe. One love. Thank you so much, Leon. Thank you. On behalf of all of us here at PSA TV, we have come to the end of today's program. I'm Avalon Williams. Stay tuned and join us again tomorrow. Me gusta más, dame más, me gusta más.